So while this starts up a, a bit more uh, introduction, just to let you know who I am. Um, as Bob said, you know, we were learning as we went along here, and part of uh, my history was actually um, operating uh, the, the Department of Energy as part of the internet at the time. And I'm not seeing slideshow because I don't have my glasses on, so hopefully I get this right. Um, and the discussion about transition was occurring and there were lots of proposals being thrown out and I was standing in the back of the room mumbling under my breath, been there, done that, doesn't scale because I'd done a bunch of transitions from random other protocols to IPv4 for the Department of Energy. And so I happened to be standing next to uh, Scott Bradner, who's the area director, and he says, fine, chair the group on transition so that we can clean this all up. And um, the next several years we spent trying to get that done. And so there's a lot of transition tools and people will complain that there are too many. And you go out and look and, oh, I need to do this transition. Tell me what to do and what, where's the tool set? And there's a suite of tools. There's too many. There should be one. And I keep saying, but there's not a one-size-fits-all IPv4 internet. How could there possibly be a one-size-fits-all answer to get from a random set of things to another random set of things? You have to get your head around this in a different way. At any rate, um, another bit of thing, we didn't coordinate this at all, uh, but um, Bob picked up on it and Elise picked up on it, a little bit of history, and I had some. <laughs> I wanted to give you a, a different kind of perspective. Now this graph is kind of weird. I mean, it's got you know, some disjoint things occurring in it. But this is due to lack of public uh, publication of what actually occurred in those records and those dates. If you go look at the IANA, you know, where and when did all of the slash eights officially get assigned to various places? 93 was a big year. A whole bunch of things happened that year. It didn't really happen that year. It's just that was the date they all got recorded because it's like everything had been kind of on paper in various places and finally in 93 somebody went and cleaned it all up and said, here, this is what happened. So it shows up that way, but you have to go dig through archives that I don't have, have access to. The more interesting piece is what are the two end dates? I picked the start date based on, you know, the RFC for IPv4. This actually doesn't have anything to do with the operational date of IPv4 networking. It's the start date of the RFC. Because if you take that and you overlay it with the long-term curve, you end up with this very interesting event occurring exactly 30 years later. It's, you know, within days. So a little more history. Went back in my file, put together, you know, found this particular thing because it occurred to me, you know, at the time I put this out, people were going, oh, I mean, it couldn't possibly be this bad. You know, there's 65 slash eights left. We got lots of addresses. It's not going to run out. And I kept saying, yeah, it will. Trust me. Um, but remember this, you know, 64, right? Remember this number. It'll come back in a couple of slides. Um, we had a little bit of discussion about how the you know, address space gets assigned, but this has been looking at it in terms of where the various pieces are. Uh, you'll notice the central line has a lot in this particular one, and then in the next one, it doesn't have so many, and Aaron has a whole bunch more, and that's because of the history John was talking about, absorbing the central function and when things occurred and how, how that all played out. But as of two days ago, yeah, I think this was two days ago, um, you know, this is what it looks like. There's 12 less slash eights left. That by itself is a bit misleading because there is a consensus among the registries and IANA that once IANA gets down to five, each of the registries get one in one shot. They get their last one immediately, right? So there's really only seven. But depending on how, and how you count and who you're talking to, you have to say there's 12 because officially there's still 12 at IANA. But five of them have already been pre-allocated and they're just waiting for an event date, right? So the real question is, what's the event date? I first put this particular graph out in 2005. Remember back to the last one that I talked about um, on the, the 64 slash eights, right? 
I put this out and people kept going, no, no, this can't possibly be right. Well, what it is is a smooth to look at what the IANA events are. Each RIR comes back asynchronously asking for however many slash eights they need based on projected need, right? And policy has some bounds on what they can get. And it's very hard, it's very, very noisy data because in fact in that trough there, there was more than a year between events when people came back to IANA to get more space, right? So you, you really can't easily pick out trends when things are you know, two this month, six months later there's four, then there's one, then there's three, then there's one, you know, and then two years later there's another one. You know, figuring that out, I started just trying to smooth the data, smooth the data, smooth the data. In fact, if you go looking through archives, Googling back in the 2005 kind of time frame for this particular graph, you'll see that I actually show it getting up close to three because I was doing a 24 month smoothing as opposed to the 36 month smoothing on this one. But at the time I put this out, I said, even if the RIRs manage to stabilize at one slash eight a month, which is the top of this curve, even if they do that, we've got 64 months left, right? But if they don't, it's, you know, we're gonna burn through them a whole lot faster. Well, guess what they did? They stabilized at 0.99 slash eights per month, <laughs> right? They managed to do that. They said, no, we're gonna stop here and we're just gonna hold right at, you know, under one slash eight a month. So they bought themselves the 64 months. Well, not quite, because like I said, five of them have been pre-allocated, so it's really 59, but it's 59 where you're only doing 0.8, you know, to 0.9 per month. You know, it, it, it's weird. Anyway, so, it, you know, you've got your five-year window between when I first put that out and now has already been burned through. That says we're within months, right? Guess what? There's a graph that, that John mentioned, but he didn't show, in terms of what's happening at APNIC this year. So this particular graph looks at each RAR and breaks down how much they're getting each year, and the, the left-hand bar in any given year is the actual to-date assignments that they've made. The right-hand bar is take that number, divide by the number of days, multiply by three, 365 and a quarter. It doesn't account for holidays and all kinds of things that happen during the year. You know, ripe in particular runs hot early in the year and then slow in the middle of the year and then hot toward the end of the year. But modeling that was too hard. It's, you know, this is very simple. Right? But it shows that by themselves this year, APNIC will allocate more space than all the other RARs combined, just by themselves. Right? And they're on an accelerating pace. Right? So it's not as simple as, well, is it months? Well, yeah, it is, but there's a lot more complexity to this. One of the things that this particular graph also shows, you can pick it out a little bit, in the 2001-2 kind of time frame, you see a little bit of trough. And in the 2008-9 time frame, it's almost identical. Economic downturn caused a slight slowing in the address assignments for the following year, and then it picked right back up. We're seeing the same thing now. It's picking right back up. The pace is going up. But I said they're, a, they're taking from IANA at a flat rate. This doesn't make sense. How can they have a flat inbound and a compound growth outbound? This doesn't work. Well, policy allowed them to hold, like I said, up to two years of space of their projected need. So you go back in time and you look at this a little closer and you say, okay, well, what have they been doing? Well, they've been burning down their internal pools, right? So instead of having two years from the time that IANA runs out until the registries start running out, you're now down to six months or less, right? So the IANA event date is just one of the events. It's the one everybody pays attention to because it's the first one, right? But it's gonna be followed in very short order by matching event dates at each of the other RIRs. Anybody wanna take a guess as to which RIR runs out first? Hint, hint, where's the tallest line, <laughs> right? At the accelerated growth rate, they will burn through all of their pool 
all of what they can get from IANA between now and the time IANA runs out, and all of their reserve pool by next July. Worst case, I mean, best case, depending on your perspective, right? It will be faster than that. I just can't give you anything better than that because the model says they've got enough to run till July at this pace, right? Another thing to notice, the green line here is Aaron. It has a sharp downturn right at the end. Last Monday, or was it Tuesday? I don't remember. It was Monday or Tuesday last week. A slash nine went out, a half of a slash eight. Poof, gone, right? That kind of event could occur very frequently between now and the end of the pools. There's nothing that's preventing that. A couple of years ago, I started talking to service providers who knew that that kind of event would have to happen toward the end, but they didn't want to get theirs too soon and be caught in a state of not having quite enough for what they really needed and not and having too much to come back and get more. So they all prepared their last request. It's like you know the pool is going to be there and it's going to run out. You don't want to get there too soon, but you don't want to be too late either. So as soon as you see the run on the bank start, you've got to be in line. So you've got to have all your documentation already lined up and ready to go. So it's very likely that this could be perceived by some of them as, oh, this is the beginning of the, start, the run on the bank. It's over. Grab now. Because if you wait another week, it might not be there. Right. So while this particular sequence says you know, an end date, and you know, none of the RARs will officially give end dates for lots of legal reasons. But I'm not part of them. I can give you dates, right? But the only thing I'll tell you is my dates don't matter. Jeff Houston puts out dates. We both have curves, and we've, we've done this dueling good cop, bad cop, depending on where you are in the world thing for years. And we agree with each other in, at the end. Our graphs don't match. But we will tell you, both tell you the graphs don't matter. They're based on history. They're not based on reality going forward. We can't model panic, right? If you could tell me how to model panic behavior, I can give you an exact end date. The best I can do is say, well, it kind of looks weird. This is a different look at the, the time window issue. So the top two curves are the ones you want to pay too, attention to in particular. The very top one is the IANA assignment dates. So this is a cumulative look at how much IANA has handed out to the RARs. The line right below that is the cumulative look at how much the RARs have given to their customers. The two white bars over here on the right, which are hard to see in this particular projector, show you the time frame. If, you, if you're looking at the cumulative set of when IANA handed out to when the RARs actually handed it out, right now it's just under a year. And so the addresses the RARs are giving out to their customers right now, they got from IANA just under a year ago. Historically, that was two to four years, depending on how far back you want to go, right? And it's been getting tighter and tighter and tighter over time. And when you get out here to the end, that shows nine months. Well, that's the cumulative set. That says if you took all of the RIRs and burned them at the same rate that they're burning through today, you get that nice, smooth end date that says, yeah, you got like nine months after Ayanna runs out. Reality is, each RAR in, operates independently. You know, Stefan's going to give you a little bit more detail on this. I'm just going to put it up here and say, you have to go and look at discrete events. Right? All of these things are discrete events. None of them play out in any way that you can actually project. The only thing I can tell you is, based on this set of historical events, I can give you a date for when I would expect a particular RIR to come back, right? And doing the frequency of those events, I can say, you know, AP Nick will come back in six more weeks, and then six more weeks after that, and then six more weeks after that, because right now they're burning through a slash eight every six weeks, right? Um, if they accelerate that, then my estimates are off. In fact, early this year, it looked like we might burn through the entire IANA pool by December this year. AP NIC slowed down a little bit. 
So that pushed it to February, March, depending on how you want to count. And then there's this wild card, wild card called Afrinic, right? The bottom one down here. Afrinic is actually at a point where one, not even overly significant request in a global context, but significant for Afrinic, one request could cause them to come back. That skews all the dates immediately because that's one more slash eight that's not available to the other guys who are counting on it, right? So you really can't pick a hard date, but if you forced me to pick a date, a couple weeks ago, the Texas version of this event, I said February 1st, IANA won't run out. Um, that was before the slash nine went out last week. <laughs> right now, January 15th, maybe January 1st. One thing, I'm pretty sure it won't occur before January 1st, because the RIs have been making some noises for a while now about 2011 being the year. So they <laughs> probably will defer that last request, <laughs> and IANA will probably not bother to get around to it until after the holiday, you know. Okay, so. <laughs> So I'm guessing January 1st it won't occur, but it might be January 2nd, right? But it probably won't be before that. But it easily could because a couple of big hits and that could cause the providers to come back in December sooner than they planned. And it could actually be this year. What does that mean to you? Well, if you haven't already got a V6 plan, guess what? Somebody's gonna be not able to get V4 addresses this way. They're gonna have to go with the t-shirt model. Right? eBay will be the place to get addresses. And it's not going to be cheap. I already pay $100 a month for one V4 address. Arguably, it comes with a business service, but the only value I get out of that entire service is the one V4 address. And that's today's price. Well, they're still free with that. So again, my name is Stefan Lagerholm. I'm, I'm a professional. I'm working for a company called Secure64. We do, do a lot of DNS stuff and IPv6. I'm not going to talk about that today. The organizer asked me to uh, talk a little bit about IPv4 depletion. I also have a blog called IPv4depletion.com where I put some comments and track some of the big allocations that's going on. And I've also been trying to predict the IPv4 uh, depletion there. Uh, I'm using fairly sophisticated mathematics to, to try to do that. And um, uh, I'm very proud to say that my prediction is actually has been pretty stable for the last uh, almost year. It has steadily shown a depletion date on March, April of next year. Uh, so I don't think we're gonna have that much more time uh, other than you know March, April uh, of next year. That's probably going to uh, when the last uh, block is going to be allocated from the IANA pool down to the regional registrars. Uh, there's actually, it's actually possible, and on my site I have a, a multitude of tools. You can actually go in and make your own prediction with your own settings, you know, how many years you want to look back in the, in the historical data and so on and so forth. It's actually possible to, to, in great detail, look at each individual RER and exactly what's going to happen here for the last uh, seven blocks that's available. So people talk about 12 blocks, but again, remember that five of them are actually already set aside, uh, one for each RER. So John Curran and Aaron is actually going to uh, pretty soon probably request an ad additional two blocks from IANA if they already, I, I guess they already uh, filed uh, for that. but. Uh, Right, so uh, so they're running really low, as you can tell here. Uh, the the pool is is uh, is less than two blocks uh, in in the Aaron region, and that's going to be the last two blocks that uh, Aaron is going to get uh, most likely. Then a Asia Pacific is going to come back. I I got that uh, in um, end of February and, and request another two blocks, uh, and then ripe for Europe in in uh, oh sorry, and in January for Asia Pacific, and then ripe. Uh, in February, two blocks, and then the whole thing is going to end up with Afrinic allocating the final block uh, because they're running pretty low. Right now, they have 0 0.71 of a slash 8 in their pool, which is about 11 million addresses. And uh, 
when they can allocate, uh, when they get down to half, they're probably going to request a new uh, allocation from IANA, uh, which is only three and a half million addresses. So if uh, once Afrinic burns three and a half million addresses, which isn't that much, uh, they need to request additional uh, addresses. So even if there would be, so, so, so April uh, 16th, this is from a couple, couple of days ago, it might be different if you go to my uh, tool today, but uh, somewhere mid-April, uh, uh, there's like two stop gaps here. There's uh, Asia Pacific, if Afrinic doesn't pick up that last block, Asia Pacific will pick that block up probably in, in, in May. So we never, by no chance, I, I don't see how we can go longer than May uh, without being depleted in the central pool. And the other way around, uh, uh, Afrinic might go earlier than RIPE, but then RIPE is gonna pick up the last blocks in, in February. So. Between February and May, most likely April, is my prediction for, uh, for the depletion date. And, and again, it has been pretty stable showing April uh, for, for almost a year now. So, so I think that's, uh, you know, uh, I can bet some, some, some beer if somebody want to bet with me. Um, because I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in, in April. So looking at some large allocations here, uh, I hope you can see. If not, I'm going to talk, talk a little bit about it. So uh, Tony talked about this slash nine that went out the other day to uh, Comcast uh, here in, in the Aran region. Um, you know, that's, that's a, a large number of eight million or so addresses, so it's a large number. Uh, but it's kind of peanuts compared to what's going on in Asia Pacific. So just looking at the last two years, China Telecom, around two slash eights in total, China Unicom, one slash eight, Korea Telecom, also around one slash eight, and, China Mobile, uh, three quarters of it slash eight. So there's like lots of large allocations going out in Asia Pacific. So it doesn't really matter what we do here. Uh, that's where the big, you know, uh, driver for IPv4 and the, the, the big uh, rollouts are, are being being done. In the Iron region, it's the usual suspect with Comcast, Brent, Verizon, AT&T, of course, uh, doing uh, uh, allocating stuff, uh, getting delegations, and, and in RIPE, you know, Telecom Italia and. France Telecom, so on. Uh, Latin America and Africa, perhaps surprisingly uh, large allocations there. Uh, um, Brazil and, and uh, especially South, South Africa as well as the northern part of Africa. There's actually a whole lot of things going on there, apparently, if you look at the different uh, delegations. Um, another interesting thing that uh, I want to talk about is this uh, notion of RER shopping that, you know, once, once uh, let's say, the Aran region runs out or the Europe re region runs out, that, that the demand would shift to another region. I don't think that's going to be possible. First of all, the big spenders usually are very localized to one uh, country. So if China Telecom comes to John Curran and asks for, you know, slash nine, I don't think that's going to really fly because they don't have any presence in the U.S., right? Uh, so there's a few service providers that are truly global. Uh, there's a few European service providers with big presence in Latin America, but other than that, I don't see how that's going to that's gonna happen. Um, so after this event in, in April, uh, what's going to happen? Are we going to see any more returns? I don't think so. I think the low-hanging fruit in terms of returns are already done. The 14 block, which was previously allocated in some funky RFC for some, some use that nobody used it for, is already returned. Uh, as well as uh, Stanford University and uh, Interop actually announced uh, uh, that they're going to return most of their, uh, I think it's uh, 45 slash 8 uh, to, the, to the global pool. So, so there's, there won't be any more returns, maybe one or two, but it's not going to make a big difference. There was also a notion of tainted blocks for a while, uh, where people said, well, some of the IPv4 blocks, like the 1 slash 8, like 1.1.1.1, for example, is probably, it's a kind of a cool address, but it's probably not a good idea to allocate that address or, you know, to any, any web server or anything, because there's like a steady stream of um, a junk coming to those addresses. And it, it appears that that's the case, but it also appears that that's very localized to like 1.1.1.1 and 1.2.3.4 and those, and those kinds of addresses. So it looks like, and, and actually APNIC already got the one block um, um, allocated from IANA, and they actually delegated most of that space already out to um, members in the region. So uh, the, the tainted block does not seem to be a big problem. And again, the RER shopping, as I talked about, 
uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to see that shift of, of, of demand. So what's going to happen here after the IANA gets depleted, uh, I have APNIC in October and, uh, and then RIPE uh, a year later in November, um, followed by ARIN. ARIN actually in pretty good shape. Uh, there's not that uh, large of, uh, you know, um, there's no really big allocations going on here in the ARIN region. Uh, except for the slash nine that was last week, but <laughs> other than that, it's been fairly uh, stable and low actually. And then Africa and Latin America is going to have IPv4 addresses for a little bit longer. But the problem here is not, you know, you have a source and a destination of all communication. So after October uh, next year, we're going to have v6 only uh, hosts out there that wants to communicate to your website and you need to give them a way of, of doing that. So even if, if you're not directly affected, if, even if you still have a stash of addresses in, uh, you know, uh, where, where you work, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta start moving to V6. And I, I would say the absolute last date that you need to be ready is, is um, by October uh, next year. That's the absolute last day. I heard there's no flag day, of course, for the transition. I heard somebody said, uh, six six in so in June uh, next year would be a good kind of uh, date because it's six six to uh, try to uh, have people move over to IPv6. So I look forward to that, and um, uh, it's really needed that we do something uh, right now. So with that, I, I want to uh, hand back to the organizers, uh, or if there's any qu questions, uh, you can go to my website, and uh, there's, uh, again, a wealth of resources there, and, and uh, you can make your own predictions, and you can look at my uh, predictions and reports, and um, um, uh, with that, I want to hand over back to Bruce and, and Ed.